Hey guys, it's your favourite little Christmas elf, CDTV Productions here with my main man Rudolph in the back. Got the, got the antlers on too, really in the Christmas spirit. Even though this isn't a Christmas themed video, it, it's coming out on Christmas, so I thought, why not wear the elf gear? So welcome to the first of my three end of year lists, those being the worst hit rap songs of 2017, the one you're watching now which is the best hit rap songs of 2017, and I'll have a best rap albums of 2017 list. And this is the first of those, I thought we'd start off positive and as it is Christmas, we might as well have a happy list coming out. And it's all- oh, these, these, these just aren't gonna work, they're not comfortable. And I think it's good to upload this one before my like-dislike ratio gets absolutely shredded on the worst songs of 2017. 17 one. So keep in mind that this list is only for hit rap songs, so if there's a really good rap song that came out this year but it didn't make the billboard charts, then it won't be on here, and also it's mostly just focusing on really mainstream songs with this list. So this is your little Christmassy boy CDTV Productions, and let's get right into this list. And at the 10th spot on our list, we have 21 Savage with Bank Account. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight M's in my bank account. Yeah, in my bank account. Yeah, in my bank account. Yeah, in my bank account. Yeah. Last year, I never would have thought I'd kick off one of my best hit songs of the year list with a 21 Savage track, but he surprised me with this one. This track was actually produced by 21 Savage himself, along with the help of Metro Boomin, and I massively respect that because the beat is one of the main parts of it that is so good. Actually, the beat is one of the best parts of the track. It's probably my favourite 21 song, and even though he doesn't rap with insane energy here, he at least comes off with a bit of charisma, and it results in a much stronger stronger track than what he usually does. And at number 9 we have Big Sean with Bounce Back. Drama, my life story. Faith of a mustard seed, I kept growing. I knew that this life was meant for me. Niggas change that more than wishing wells. Karma come around, I wish and well. Living like I'm on a limitless pill, I kill the scene like I'm Denzel. Big Sean has a really good flow in my opinion, and that's on full display here. He shows numerous different flows, and I also think he has a pretty good voice for rapping, despite him being a bit monotone sometimes. But this was the lead single from what I consider to be Big Sean's best album yet, and he definitely delivered some fantastic tracks on there, this being one of them. And I also don't think there's any awful lyrics on here. Awful lyrics have kind of become synonymous with Big Sean, but I don't think there's any on here that make me want to slam my head into the nearest hard surface, so that's a plus two. And at number eight, we have Lil Uzi Vert with XO Tour Life. Why is life spelt with two L's and a three instead of an E? That, 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 it's just not even artistic, that's just dumb. I don't really care if you cry. I don't really shouldn't have a lie. Now of course this song isn't one of the best things to ever happen to rap, but it is insanely catchy. Like it's a next level of catchy. I've played this song too many times this year, so not having it on here wouldn't feel right. There's something that's quite endearing about Uzi's singing, he's not exactly a great singer, but him and his engineers know how to make his voice work, and he has good vocal melodies. I am not a huge fan of his work as you guys may know, but I have to give him props for this. It is not the best song I've heard this year, but it might be the catchiest. And at our seventh spot, we have Travis Scott with Butterfly Effect. For this life I cannot change, in the hills, deep off in the main, in the nims, we like candy cane. At the time of scripting this, Travis's next album still doesn't have a release date, and I seriously hope it gets one soon after hearing this. Although I am a little bit more apprehensive after hearing the Huncho Jack album, but at the same time, Astroworld will probably be very different to that. I hope we get it this year as a surprise drop, but I guess we'll see. I love the different types of mixing effects Travis uses here, because his vocal experimentation is one of the best things about him as an artist, and this is also the perfect type of beat for Travis with that kind of outer space vibe his beats usually have. The only thing that annoys me is that there's this sound that sounds like a car horn beeping at some points in the beat. That really confuses me when I've got my headphones on and I'm out for a walk and listening to this track. And next we have Young Thug and Future with Patek Water featuring Offset at our sixth spot. Hey. What is that? It's pitting water.
I thought Super Slimy by Thugger and Future was a great project, and this is the highlight track from the album. The beat for this is just incredible, and I love that vocal sample during the hook. I also think it was structured perfectly. Future to provide a great hook, Young Thug to provide some of that madness with his verse, and Offset providing one of the best guest verses I've heard from him. Offset seriously kills this track with his flow. His verse is so damn good. All these separate parts combine to make one fantastic song. And next up at number 5 we have Gold Link with Crew featuring Brent Fayaz and Shy Glizzy. First thing I want to do here is give credit to Brent Fayaz because god damn that hook sounds nice as hell. He killed it with those silky vocals. This was also the first time I've heard a Gold Link track and I definitely think I'll check out more of his music after this. Even if most of his music doesn't sound like this because I know this is a kind of more oriented to be a hit single, I'm still interested in seeing what his music catalogue is like. He flows really well here and he has a pretty appealing voice. I liked Shy Glizzy's voice a little less, he sounds a bit like a pitched up version of Yo Gotti to me, but his verse was still really good. Also the shortness of the song makes it so replayable, like by the time it finishes I just want to hear it again. I am definitely gonna check out the Gold Link album that this song came from. And at our fourth spot we have Logic with 1-800-273-8255 featuring Alessia Cara and Khaled. I've been on a low, I've been taking my time. I feel like I'm out of my mind It feel like my life ain't mine I finally wanna be alive now, whilst I still think yelling is wildly inappropriate on a song about suicide, this song is still very beautiful and moving. I have said before that it's very simplistic with how it talks about depression, but I have realised that's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to appeal to everyone to help get a message out there, and that is what it did. Like, this song actually had a noticeable effect. Three weeks after its release, calls to the suicide prevention lifeline increased by 20 27%. Whilst it does present an incredibly simplistic view of depression, you have to admit that this song has helped a lot of people out, and that is something which I can respect. It's also catchy as hell too, which which does help. And at number three, we have Kendrick Lamar with DNA. This is probably, no actually, this is definitely the hardest track on this list. This is the first full song on Damn, and it's a perfect way to kick off the album because it gets you insanely hyped while still delivering a strong message through the lyrics. Kendrick is definitely one of those artists that will still put a bunch of meaning behind a banger track, and goddamn, the beat switch in the middle of this track is so incredible. I absolutely love the second half of this song. The beat is incredible with some really deep bass, a sample that's almost kind of glitching and really weighty kicks. And Kendrick flows insanely well over this beat. It's just, it's just a super solid track as a whole. And for our second spot, we have French Montana with Unforgettable featuring Sway Lee. We're breaking all kind of new ground on my channel. A French Montana track on a best songs list? That is almost blasphemy. Fortunately, this is essentially Sway Lee's song as he handles a lot of the track and mostly carries it. I've made it no secret that Ray Shrimmerd is my guilty pleasure and Sway Lee is definitely my favourite member from the duo. He can flow really well, like he can adapt to doing rapping flows and singing flows and there's something that just sounds really nice with his singing. I want his solo album album to come out ASAP. The beat is very simplistic, it's practically almost the same all throughout the song, but it's very catchy and French Montana honestly doesn't suck that bad here. I still think he's one of the least charismatic rappers ever, but he doesn't perform that badly on here. It all merges to make a pretty great song overall. I have listened to this one a lot and it is, it is perfect for a club as well, I can tell you that. And at number one, and my favourite hit rap song of 2017, we have Post Malone with Rockstar featuring 21 Savage. Now, 
now it might be because this is the song on the list that I first listened to most recently so it still feels new to me but I absolutely love this track so damn much whilst I do feel that not all the lyrics describe rock star like traits it's still a very good track I love post vocals on this and the incredibly memorable hook his verse is great too and I love when he really kicks off his singing and does those vocals that kind of sound like a goat <laughs> I don't know why but the, the I find them so nice to listen to he, he really does sound like a goat sometimes but it's not it's not a bad thing it's unique not to mention 21 savage definitely has one of his best verses here I like how 21 sounds with autotune and his more toned down voice actually works with the beat here this is just a great song and for me is definitely the one I've had the most fun listening to in 2017 well guys that is gonna be it for the video today thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope you guys have all had a great christmas uh let me know how it's going so far and i've decided to set a little goal before the end of the year i think a very reasonable goal is for 110,000 subscribers before we hit 2018 so if you haven't subscribed already i would greatly appreciate that so we can hit that goal as soon as possible leave a like if you did enjoy it and let me know what your favorite songs of 2017 were like i said i'm also doing a worst songs of 2017 list and a best rap albums of 2017 list and i think i'll do all those consecutively just get those top 10s out and then just go back to my regular discussion themed content with a few top 10s sprinkled throughout occasionally so thank you so much for watching guys i will hopefully see you all in the next one and this is your little christmas elf cdtv signing out